Ooh. Oh, man. All right, so another late night one. This one came in earlier today. I'm pretty happy about it. I got this thing for spear point blades, so let's get into it, everybody. Let's talk blades, because that's what we're into. Today, I have for you guys the OKC, otherwise known as the Ontario Knife Company, uh, Dozier, Dozer, Dozier Arrow. So, um, I'm a fan of, uh, Ontario knives. Uh, you guys have seen my rat ones. Uh, I've given a few away. I only have two rat ones left. I can't really get to them right now. I was going to put them in this video, but, uh, if you guys want to, you can look it up. Um, I have, it's one, it's on my channel. One of the rat models are on there. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit weird with my words right now. So I got this sticker recently. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I went to Knife Show 2020 last year, and uh, they picked this up. And they had it along with their stuff. So I think it was at SHOT Show, I believe. Knife Show, excuse me, uh, SHOT Show. So it's Ontario Knife Company, and of course, <laughs> the rat model you can see on there. It's a good knife. It really is. I, I really enjoy the rat models. It's just a little bit wider in the pocket. That's the only reason why I don't really care for it too much. Let's go ahead and open this box up. Uh, on Amazon, they are selling these right now uh, at 51 or excuse me, $61.50. Um, so it's kind of a budget, at least for me. I'm used to spending you know, one, maybe two hundred dollars on knives, but I haven't really done that recently. You know, I've been... Uh, kind of trading so this one is a brand new purchase uh not from me by the way but uh from a buddy of mine who collects these knives <laughs> and uh i didn't really trade this one he just had three of them i don't know why and he gave me one so i was like well that's really cool of him. so here it is in all of its glory the ontario wow that's really grippy that is a very grippy G10 right there. Now, I ended up getting a fake one of these one time. Um, I didn't like it. It was a Chinese version. But uh, you can totally tell that this is quality. There's something on the... Uh, there it is. So that's very grippy G10, I have to say. That is really grippy. Really, really grippy. Can't say that I like it, but I can't say that I don't like it. You know, kind of reminds me of, like, the aggressive kind of cold steel knives. But I can already tell you right now, for medium-sized hands, it's actually not that bad. It's, uh... And I just got off work, so... My hands are a little bit... Feeling a little bit weird. I'm working in the cold. But, I mean, I get a good grip on there. On the handle, so that's really cool. And, uh... Oh, one second, hold oh. Trying to figure out what the heck is on. Okay, I got it off. All right, so one thing that I, I really do like about this is that the uh, thumb stud right here is easy to get to. It's kind of raised up a little bit. And I can tell you right now, I already like this knife. So there it is, the OKC Bob Dozier. I hope I'm saying that right, Dozier. See it on the blade. I really like that. That's, um, that is a very, it's very simplistic to me because it's just, you know, knife. <laughs> um, now, what I really like about this is that it's D2. So D2 steel, that's always great. So it's a tough little tool steel. Taiwan D2. And then, uh, Dozier design. I really hope I'm saying that right. But that drop point is pretty pretty awesome. That well, I shouldn't say drop point. Excuse me, spear point. Um, so it's a very no nonsense kind of knife. It's very slim. It's very light. We'll get into the specs of everything right now, so we can have a good idea. So on Amazon, yeah, they're still selling it at uh, sixty one fifty. So this isn't bad. I have to admit, this is not something that I would freak out on purchasing because this is a knife that's under literally under 80 bucks 
Now, what I could have liked better about this knife would be a deep carry pocket clip, but this is not that bad. Pretty obvious. You're going to have some of it sticking out of your pocket, but not very much. Maybe just a little bit. So that's not too bad. Uh, another thing that makes me nervous about this, it's only got one screw. So I'm hoping that that's going to keep this on here uh, decently enough to where I wouldn't have to worry about it, um, you know, because that's just one screw. And that kind of makes me just a tad bit on the nervous side. So, but yeah, not bad. Really good. We'll go ahead and get into the specs of it all. Get it, you know, running. I really, really do want to see how much this thing weighs because it is super, super light. Sorry, there's a decent amount of dust on there. I gotta clean some stuff sometimes, you know? My focus is kind of weird. There it goes. What the heck? Come on. Hello? Okay, I think that worked a little bit. It's kind of in and out of focus right now. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep going. So you're looking at, wow, a whopping 2.83 ounces on this knife. So, <laughs> under 3 ounces, that's uh, that's pretty pretty damn awesome. And we'll go ahead and get into the, uh, the length of it, because I'm really curious. This is almost a 4-inch blade. And I'm right. So, yeah, um... The blade length on this is a three and five eighths. Okay. All right. Right at the pivot, it's four inches reach if you, uh, you know, keep it at that length while holding it anyways without having to choke up too much, which I don't think you really can. And then uh, it comes in at a eight and one eighths inches all together. And the handle length, you're looking at four and a half inches. So, I mean, this is very subtle. It's not a humongous knife. I mean, three and a half, it's a little bit over three and a half. Just a little bit. So, you know, and then of course, I don't really know what kind of pivot is on. I can't really, oh, it looks like Teflon. They look like Teflon washers in there. Oh, check it out. Sorry, don't mean to blind you guys. I'm trying not to blind myself. Ah! Yeah, it's Teflon. There's two Teflon washers in there. I can see the white. Yep, you can kind of see that's one under there. And the other one is kind of up top. There it is. So yeah, running on Teflon washers. I mean, that's not bad. Like I said, this, uh, this portion right here, the thumb stud, the only thumb stud that's here, it is raised up a little bit so you can actually get to it. So, and I like they have that texture on the thumb stud right there. So you can actually get a good grip on this knife. Not bad. I really do like this. This is really nice. Handle's nice. It's just the right size. And then um, holding it in such a way, I mean, it's, it's a decent knife for what it is. Pretty dope. And I kind of want to, you know what? I kind of want to do, well, I'm actually, I need, I need to see how wide this thing is, so... You're looking at a 2.5 on the blade and on the handle, you're looking at a 9.9. .9. All right, well, like I said, not bad. Still really good. And I heard somebody say that the lock mechanism on this thing will fail. I don't see it. I'm knocking on the back of this spine, and it seems pretty, pretty stable. So... I don't think this knife is really meant for too much hard use, considering that uh, the handle scales are really thin. Look at how thin the handle scales are. And there's a little bit, there's a, a tad bit of flex in the handle, but not a lot. Like if I'm bearing down, I'm really, really squeezing that right there. So it's, and G10's pretty, pretty strong stuff anyway. So this is not that bad. So open construction, look at that. You can clean this thing real easy. Go in there with some paper towel or some pressurized air. Or you can even just, you know, do a good blow in there. And it should get all the, uh, you know, all the dust and pocket lint out of there if you need be. I advise not to do that. But, you know, 
some people out there do. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> I'm not going to name any of my friends out there because I know I've seen them do it. They just... <sighs> and I'm all, really? That's how you clean your knife? <laughs> all right, bro. Um, let's do a size compare with whatever I got in my pocket today. So today I am carrying this guy. Another spear point blade. Of course, it's my Akta Non Verba Z400. Uh, great knife. I've been carrying it literally since I posted the video on it. I really do love this knife. It's so aesthetically pleasing. It really is. And these Triton dots that are on there do light up. Or, well, when you have it out in the sun. Um, it's just kind of fool. It's a little bit weird. I mean, you, you have it in your pocket all the time, so it's not really going to light up. But it's kind of cool. So let's see. I'm actually curious about the blade length on... I'm going to put it up blade to blade. And to be honest with you, it's not too far off. Yeah, look at that. So hilt to hilt right now, blade to blade. And you're only missing... This is a 4-inch blade. The, you know, the one behind it. So it's, you're not really missing that much. You're only missing just that little itty bitty portion. You're only missing about like that much right there. That's not a lot. That's really not. You can see that on camera. You know, for somebody like me, because I'm always about how long my knives are, and I always try to keep it as close to four inches as possible or at four inches. Um, for two reasons. One, I just, I'm used to four inch knives. Two, I, I prefer knives that are a little bit longer um, I don't like short knives too, too much. I don't find too much use in them. Uh, and also, you know, if last stitch effort, self-defense, it's always best to have a four inch blade. That's what I was always told when you're looking for a decent four inch or a decent self-defense blade, you want to go with the golden standard of four inches. That's just what I was told. You know, I mean, people can correct me. There's always that one guy that's like, no, 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 you got to have a crambit. You got to have a hook or you got to have a tonto. Or you got to look man i don't go out there doing all that craziness okay i just go off of whatever people tell me sometimes whatever people tell me ain't all that right but uh you know i also have my own opinion and i do believe that four inches is pretty good for self-defense length but uh it all depends on what you know and uh yeah so it's really not bad uh, this knife is way bigger this knife is obviously smaller but it's not too much of a difference i'm putting them side by side to each other and you know it's not that bad either way if you like ontario knife company the dozier might be something you might want to look into doesn't break the bank um i'm going to carry it for a little bit and see how it carries this is the only complaint that I have about this knife is that the G10 on this thing is ultra grippy. Like I said, it really does remind me of how coarse the G10 was on the uh, on some of my uh, uh, cold steel models that I have. And they're not shy on that stuff. So if you're not wanting something that shreds the pocket, I highly suggest not to buy this knife because this is really, really grippy g10 oh let's see how sharp this thing is well i still have a chance anyways go ahead and see uh you know how good they are okay it's uh I gotta be honest with you, the... It seems to be sharp, it's just... I don't know what it is. I think... I don't know. It seems like it's, sh it's sharp enough, but it's not really catching the paper as well as I wanted it to. It's a little bit odd to me. I don't know, maybe I'm just a little tired. Or maybe... Maybe this knife isn't as sharp as I would have liked it. A little bit weird how they sharpen this now that I look at it. It's a little bit odd. Uh, hmm, interesting. 
Very interesting. Well, I'm going to carry it around. I'm going to do what I do with it. And uh, maybe, I don't know, just maybe it'll be just a little bit different for me. But this is not a bad knife altogether for the price. I mean, you get slimness, lightweight, great grip on here. You get almost a 4-inch blade, D2 steel, adequately sharp, at least from what you see here anyways, as far as I've cut. And, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it holds up over time, and uh, you guys will know for sure whether or not I can say anything good or bad about this knife. <laughs> anyways, Ontario Knife Company. If you guys like the Rat 1, I'm pretty sure that this is something that you might want to look into. Um, the Rat 1s are pretty cheap. Uh, if you're interested in a Rat 1, they're around $20 to $30 for the basic OS 8 version. I think they come in uh, different colors still. I think it was uh, the one that I, or the two that I had in OS 8 was uh, black and uh, OD green. I didn't care much for the OD green. I actually gave that to my dad. I was like, here you go, bud. <laughs> and then uh, I kept... Oh, yeah, and there's some in D2 that are just a little bit more expensive. They're about, a, you know, a little bit more double the price, probably like 40 45 bucks for the D2 steel. Uh, get one in carbon fiber handle scales. You're looking at between 40 and 60 depending on where you go. But, yeah, so uh, I'm actually happy to have this one. I'm going to carry it around and see how it does for a little bit. So, yeah, why not? <laughs> Go ahead and slash that like button, stab that subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon so you guys are notified when I post new stuff. Please, in these troubled times, be kind, be safe. Please, please, please carry responsibly, and I will see you all in the next video.